Well, uh, Mary, where are you off to at this time of night? I think that's just right. London, please. London, eh? It'll get you there, but it won't bring you back, you know. I know. Good night, Mr. King. Good night, Mary. Well, where is she? In a minute now, Mr. Wilby. You did tell her that you had me in mind for a son-in-law. Yes, I told her. Well, anyway, she's not my girl. She's Emily's, you know that. Daughter or stepdaughter, what's the difference? It'll be your funeral when I make my report on the shortages. Now, listen, Mr. Wilby, I've told you 20 times. If the brewers think I've been doing any funny business... Well, haven't you? Anyway, the brewers don't think. They just read my reports. Oh, she'll be here all right. I told her, 8.30. Yeah, she better be. Sam! Well, where is she? I've been talking to your missus in the bar, Sam. She thought all to tell you. Tell him what? Your Mary caught the 840 train for London. Took a single ticket. Yeah, Mr. Welby. Put that place on that track oh, for this Sam, room. Sam, Mr. Welby! Mr. Welby! I never ought to have brought her here. I never ought to have brought her. Exquisite. You lending it a little young for me? Young? If anything, madam, you are a little young for it. Uh, you don't think it's too tight? Tight? If anything, madam, you are a little... Oh. You look dazzling, but dazzling. <laughs> don't you agree, Miss Rain? Uh, oh, absolutely blinding, but blinding. Must say, I have managed to keep my figure. You certainly have. You're a Venus, madam. Oh, Miss Rain. Great, Miss Lawrence. Oh, my poor child. Oh, Madam Flory. Crispy. And where are you going? In my fur cape and my Crispin hat. Oh, and my pet ascot model. Where do you think you're going? Oh, she's not going anywhere, Mr. Crispin. She's been. And how many more of my clothes are you wearing? Been? In my creation? It was a lunch date and I wanted to impress. In my elegant new look, Miss Lawrence. Out. It was my fault. I told her she could take them. You too. Out. How do I get out of this thing? Thing? My creation? Oh, women are beasts, but beasts. Oh, look at Madame Flory. They're bursting out of my creations all over the salon. What am I going to do? Oh. But hate it. Come on. Golly. Well, that settles it. Refined young ladies. Well, we've been everything else. Come on. Is it all right? I see Mr. Pepperfield as a nasty old man with plenty of hands. He'll interview us personally. Oh, no. It's a lady. Someone told me she'd be here in five minutes, but that was about ten minutes ago. Well, well. Now I know what a refined young lady looks like. I'm not refined. I mean, I'm... Nor are we. Well, tear my petticoat. Listen to this. Modesty of deportment, soberness of apparel, esprit de corps, proper respect for authority. Laundry. Punctuality, courtesy, patience, perseverance, prudence. Well, they can't be paying a penny less than 50 pounds a week for all that. Sorry. Hey, what's the idea? You... It always happens when your night is dirty, doesn't it? What is it? It was just the last straw, that's all. After everything else, nobody coming to interview us. And I'm hungry. Oh, come on, mop yourself up. You'll be all right. 
Come on, golly, let's get out of this. Come to think of it, I'm hungry myself. So am I. According to what I read, there ought to be a restaurant around here somewhere. Come on, it is. It's food. It's all right. I won't run off with it. Break down, keep right, and ask for Gladys. Pop for two, pop for four. So you're being gone well, she's here again. Nice young man, is he? Yum, that's a fair <laughs> Well, you're going to love it here. Yeah, bags of glamour. Run to the end, ask for Gladys. Started counting the things out now. I said to him, I said, if I don't get a transfer from this tin fish, I'll turn into one, I said. Gladys! Gladys! All right. I know. Three more refined young ladies. This is Brenda, this is Mary, and I'm Gloria. Golly, for sure. Golly? Golly, you ought to have a red waistcoat and sparky black hair. Come on. What's that? I've got corn ducks. That's all right, it's my heel. Oh, well, don't worry. I'll fix you up with a pair of Pepperfield's cosy clogs. Harry. Oh, you must meet Harry, the pig food man. He's sweet. Smells ever so nice, don't you, Harry? All right, sweetheart. We can't all look like Vivian Lee. This is Golly. Hello. Hello. And Mary. Hello. And Brenda. Oh. Hello. Hello. You want to see him when he's out? You wouldn't think he'd ever looked a potato in the eye. Pig food! Coming! Who's Miss Bell? Oh, Ding Dong. Oh, Stinker Bell. She's a sweetheart who interviewed you. When she's satisfied with her morals and manners and references, she loses them on me. Or did you see Clit? Clit? Oh, you didn't. Mr. Clitheroe, the manager. He does the interviews sometimes. I suppose he interviews the pretty ones. Well, I thought you was from the Dumb Animals League. Pretty ones? Not that can help it. Dead scared he is. Here we are, then. 7, 10, 11. Private safe deposits for diamond tiaras, clothing coupons and other valuables. What's Mr. Clitheroe scared of? Scared of? Why us? Women. He run a mile when he sees you. Don't worry, I can run too. Do we have to wear one of those? We certainly do. Cheer, cheer up, kid. You'll get used to it. It isn't that. I'm hungry. Of course, that's why we can... Hungry? You're hungry? My advice is make the best of it while you can, kid. Half a day watching the customers and you'll be cured for good. Steady on, she means it. Well, I'll get some uniforms and anything else that's going. Come on, let's go while the going's good. No, I'm staying. Golly, you can't. Wear those appalling clothes and... and... Anyway, you'll be out in your ear as soon as they find we just walked in without an interview. Come on, anything but this. I don't want you to stay because of me. Don't worry, I'm not. For one thing, I want to take a look at Mr. Clitheroe. That's the scalp I've got to get. You're not staying that long. Oh, yes, I am, and so are you. Oh. All right. Here we are, girls. It's not China, just hard-boiled. They use one to every 40 egg salads. Customers will never miss it. Best I could do, they'll just stop that sinking feeling. I've just seen old Cliff. He wants to see you. Come on. I've told him I've got three new threats to his peace of mind. It's a long time since an end saw that one. What about Miss Bell? Haven't you seen enough of her for one day? Come on, we go with the breeze up Charles Boyer at Clitheroe. Uh, come in. The three new girls, Mr. Clitheroe. Will you see them separately? Uh, thank you, Gladys. No, uh, all together, please. All together? Safety in numbers. <laughs> Here they are, sir. Uh, don't, don't go, Gladys. I may need your... <laughs> yes. Uh, would you kindly give me your names, please? Mary Cordon. Uh, C-O-R-D-E-R? That's right. Next, please. Brenda Lawrence. E-N-C-E? -E? Yes. Next, please. Golly. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I was dreaming. Gloria Rain. Golly for short. Um, R-A-I-N? E. I hope you won't dream on duty, Miss Rain. Did you say Golly? Yes, Mr. Clitheroe. <laughs> it's quite an unusual name, isn't it? I understand you've all been interviewed by Miss Bell, is that right? That's right. Well, in that case, you'll have learned something of our standards and traditions. I hope you'll respect them and that you'll be very happy here. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Featherwell. Please report at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning sharp, will you? Uh, that's all right, Gladys. This way, girls. Uh, and Gladys. Yes, Mr. Featherwell. Please see they put their uniforms on as soon as possible, will you? Particularly that Miss... Um... Golly? Yes. Yes, Mr. Featherwell.
Phew. One more step and I couldn't have made it. The human feet can only stand so much. Still, they got us the job. And what a job. Oh, I'm never going to get used to you. I'm never going to get used to any of it. I can feel the soup round my thumb. And Gladys. I like Gladys. Fresh but friendly. I shall like Miss Bell. We're going to have lovely chats together about our love affairs. I like Mr. Clitheroe. And who do you like? I like you two. <laughs> hey. Hey, you're not allowed to clear other people's tables until you've known them seven years. Besides, you haven't seen the place yet. You may not want to stay. Oh, I shall, please. Well, you've seen the entrance hall. That was the landing with the tall mat. <laughs> this is the spacious lounge. Breakfast room, dining room. Library, music room, main bedroom, spare bedroom. Yours, ducks. Usual offices to the right. Kitchen, scullery, butler's pantry to the left. Well, I think that's a lot. It's lovely. Don't forget the garden. Oh, yes. The garden. Map and guide, tuppence. I don't know whether they're past their best or they haven't got to it yet. It's always one or the other. They're lovely. If you want the funniest kid. <laughs> hey! Shopping, it's 20 past five. Oh. And I was dreaming about Hattie, the pig food man. It was awful. You go. No, my credit's only good at the off license. We need your big blue eyes, dear, for that little squirt and the delicatessen. Come on. I'll do the washing up. Oh, no, you won't. You'll put everything in the wrong places. Here. Biscuits. Company for the hard-boiled egg. Come on. Wait! That's better. I thought I was feeling short and stumpy. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? Sorry. My gas has gone out. I'm sorry, but why don't you light it again? I haven't any money. I haven't either. Well, I've got some money, but not the right sort. I want a shilling for the slot. Oh, and some milk. Are you sure you got the right flat? I must say, you don't look like a criminal. I don't know where to keep it. I do, in the kitchen. I never thought you'd take the points for the dried egg. My smile, dear. It's had a hard day today. I've got a man in the kitchen. Mary. A man. Hello. I came out to borrow a shilling. What? Gone off the wallop? Oh. Miss, your little watchdog growled at me. I didn't. I... Well, not really. Well, I didn't know. Oh, that's all right, Mary. Dick, Mary. How'd you do? He lives in the flat below and borrows shilling. And that's not all. He owes us three tomatoes, a fish knife without a handle, a bottle of milk, and now a shilling. And we'd like a shilling back, please. Not a sort of a bit of 18 hapeness. Thank you, ladies. I knew there was something else. What? Well... Do you suppose you could lend me a piece of toast and a knife and fork to go with it? You win. <laughs> now I really will show you around. Here, here, catch. Can I do anything? Why not? You do take people seriously, don't you? Well, I'd like to see you try it. There you are, in the middle of the floor, with a tomato juice and a bread and butter pudding, and you can't remember who ordered which. And 40 customers going, mees, mees, till you think you're in a snake house. Easy. I could get a job as a waiter tomorrow if I wanted one. I shall drop things. I know I shall. I don't know what you're making such a song and dance about. It's absolutely simple. Why, all you want is a little confidence and, um, boys. Now then, who's the steak pie? I thought you were going to show us how. I am showing you who's the steak pie. I think I'm a steak pie. Ah, no. You're creme a la soup. You're the steak pie. And, uh, golly, you must be hedgehog a la pepperfield. Or would you rather be a fish? Look out, here comes Think about. Thank you very much for the demonstration, Mr. Lambert. Well, you girls painted such a picture of the stinker, I really thought she was after me. Come on, clear out. No more lunches after half past two. Well, what about the bills? Well, no more bills after half past two. But it's important. Oh, that's arithmetic. What's three, four and tuppence isn't six and six? Nineteen shillings. Well, she's right, too. Well, how do you do that? It's practice. Three gins, one sherry, two whiskies a port, three stouts and a jill, fifteen and five. Easy. 
Mark my words, this is a young lady with a sinister background. If I was still in the missing persons department, I'd look through the files. Height, five foot three, weight 105 pounds, huh? Say, I've just thought of something. Isn't Pepperfield's in your beat now? It is indeed. Better watch yourselves. You're not really a policeman. Don't answer that. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. He's a policeman, all right. They always wear their uniform trousers off duty. I've just remembered. I haven't unpacked my suitcase. Hope I can add up two joints, mashed sprouts, three soups, four coffees, one prunes and semolina, one baked jam roll, one cover charge, surcharge, service charge. Ooh. Oh, well. Back on the crest of the crime wave. Good night, ladies. Thanks for having me. Good night. Come on, Rip Van Lawrence. Oh, good night, Mary. Good night. Good luck tomorrow. Don't forget my shilling. I won't. Bring it back tomorrow when I come up to borrow the carpet sweeper. Good night. <laughs> Here you are, fully fashioned sackcloth. Get move on, inspection begins prompt at half past. Ah, what's up? Oh, I'm a fool, I'll have told you. No nail varnish. Unnecessary, insanitary and immodest. Thank heavens one of you's all right. When Miss Bell sees you too. Anybody got any remover? <laughs> what a hope. Well, what am I going to do? Keep me on your back and hope for the best. All jewellery, all makeup. No makeup? Do you mean we're expected to go about with our natural expressions? That's right. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Down the full half inch, You look like a sack of coal, girl. Yes, Miss Bell. Three new girls, Miss Bell. Oh. Hmm. Very smart. Thank you, Miss Bell. Not at all. Smartness is not our aim. Let me see, you are... Golly. I beg your pardon. Her name's Gloria, but we call her Golly. Do we? I think not. And you are... Mary. And you? Brenda. Your caps are too high, your skirts too short, your hair too long. Your eyebrows are plucked, your faces are painted, and your fingernails are barbarically decorated. Which is unnecessary, insanitary and immodest. You have a lot to learn, ladies. I should be obliged if you will learn it in the next... 25 minutes, when the restaurant will be open. Miss, Miss! Betty, come and collect the menu. Yes, Miss Betty. What's the matter with her? She's crackies on Mr. Clitheroe. Young love it is. Ten years late. Bet she wouldn't keep him waiting outside of Woolworths. We all swear as our caps paralytic to the eyebrows. Parallel, Edie. Come on, girls. Uh, come in. Ah, Miss Bell. Come in, will you? Uh, sit down. Um, I've uh, had a letter from Mr. Pepperfield. He's uh, apparently had some complaints. Um, never butter, always margarine, uh, not enough sugar for the coffee, and never any really bacon. You look like a worried little boy. Uh, do I? <coughs> What's the explanation, Miss Bell? Don't let it bother you. Not in the least bothered, but uh, where does all the stuff go to? Into the cooking. Mr. Pepperfield is a very old gentleman. He doesn't quite believe rationing is real. But you can't cook without butter and sugar, you know. Oh, can't you? <coughs> can't you? Uh, well, what about the bacon? Omelettes. Yes, well, that explains so much, but I do feel... I've really... seen your three new girls. Two of them are got up like Red Indians, and the other one's not much better. Well, they're really very young, aren't they? Um, well, that's all right. Thank you for now. Robert. Miss Bill. Please, I've repeatedly asked you not to... Do you still feel the same, then? I do, yes, I'm afraid. <laughs> but really, there's nothing to be afraid of. Isn't there? No, of course there isn't, but this is a, a business relationship, and I... Of course. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I've got some, quite by chance, some theatre tickets for tomorrow, too. I wondered if you would care to... I'm afraid not. I, I don't wish to be unkind, but I, I can't afford to... Uh... You are fond of the theatre. What? Uh, yes. B very. Yes. I remembered your saying so. You'll be all right. It's not easy. Just coffee and tea and biscuits and odds and bobs. 
Remember two things. All customers are three parts potty. The stinker bell. She's got eyes in the back of her neck. We're off. Good luck, kids. Unusual, please. I'm afraid I'm new here, sir. Eh? Oh, oh, oh I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you were saying, speak quite naturally. I don't know what your usual is, sir. Oh, uh, a cup of tea, please. No milk, no sugar. And if you can find a cup with a handle, that would be a great treat. Yes, sir. Here, golly. Clitheroe's elevenses. The stinker told me to take them. Be a duck, do it for me, will you? I've got choir boys out in at my tables. Twelve ginger beers and... Which way to the cloak from, miss? Uh, I'll take that. Thanks, pal. Thank you. These cakes don't look very nice. I'm afraid they're all we have, madam. Those are much nicer. They're just the same. No, 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 they're not. That's better. You're golly, aren't you? Yes. But Miss Bell, she didn't... Uh... Oh, no, she asked Gladys, and Gladys asked me. <laughs> but why shouldn't she ask me? Well, because you're so very, um... New? Yes, that's it. Well, uh... How are you like it here? Oh, very much, thank you. Go on. Oh, uh, Mr. Clitheroe? Yes? Do you always wear glasses? Well, for the reading, I usually find that, uh... Why? Oh, oh nothing. Gloria, you will please take your orders from me, and not from Gladys. There are customers at all your tables. That's all right. I, I kept her. You're sure she didn't keep you? Miss Bell. You seem to forget that it's part of your job to set a good example to the staff. I suggest that you try and remember it. Brenda's Bob. Uh, thank you. Ah, oh, sir, I don't suppose you're interested, but, uh... But what? Well, it's quarter to nine, that's all. Goodbye. Quarter to nine? It can't be. It seems like the middle of the night. It can't possibly be the quarter to nine.
tablecloths dirty. I know, sir. I brought your clean one. I'm dawdling about it. Sorry, sir. Won't keep you a moment. Come along, come along, come along. This isn't soup. Well, you didn't order soup, sir. Yes, I did. Maligatoni. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I'll go and get some. Uh, never mind. Uh, I'll make do with the roast chicken. Roast beef, sir? You're a dreaming girl. I ordered duck. I beg your pardon, sir. I'll go and get some chuck. I mean, Dickon. You'll do nothing of the sort. You'll get me the manager. Uh, yes. Did you want to see me, sir? Uh, uh, this young woman, Mr. Clitheroe. Uh, not a, a complaint, Mr. Pepperfield, sir. Well, uh, have we any more like her? Um, uh, no, sir. That's what I complain of. Oh. Uh, uh, sit down, Clitheroe, sit down. Uh, now, what about the month's figures? Well, we're, we're just about holding our own, sir. We shall have to do better than that. Yes. Uh, I know how you feel about the firm's tradition, sir, but, uh... Go on, go on. Well, it, it is 1948 now, sir, and I, I do feel that the, the girls' uniforms are... The girls' what? The, the girls' uniforms, sir. Rather old-fashioned, wouldn't you? No, don't start that. Silk stockings and, and, and short skirts, I know. Uh, I want to see Harry. Harry, sir? You've got a young man in the kitchens, relative of someone I used to know. Oh, yes. I want to see him in your office alone. Five minutes' time. Oh, yes, all right. Yeah, no, we'll get along with you, get along with you. Oh, by the way, what was the name of that young woman? <laughs> the one with the smile. Oh, uh, I think her name's Rain, sir. Uh, uh, Gloria Rain. I, uh, I believe she calls herself Golly or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got your hat, sir. Sorry, I, I came in the wrong door. It's all right. I, I'm always doing it. I'm all right. Oh, my ankle. Tess. Silly little thing. All right, Mr. Clitheroe. Yeah, well, look, uh, just put your... Ah, ah, that's fine. I'm sorry. I'll see you in one moment. Hey, now, pick these things up. Yes, Miss Bell. Tell her he's wanted in my office, will you? Then you'd better take her out of everybody's way. Look, uh, you've got to go home. I, I'll get you a taxi. Are you all right, Mary? Thank you, Gloria. I can attend to this. Yes, Miss Bell. Anybody think you was a load of rubbish, wouldn't they, dearie? Come in. Oh, hello, sir. Well, my boy. I never thought you'd stick it. The year's nearly up. Two more weeks, three more days. And nobody knows who you are? No, I'm just Harry the Pig Food Boy. I'm pleased with you. Most of all because you kept your mouth shut when it would have made things easier to open it. You think I've been harsh with you? Well, Harry, I... my boy, you made a young fool of yourself at Cambridge. Sir, that was a It's all over and done with. But if you were ever going to direct this firm, I had to find out whether you were just young or, or whether you were a fool. <laughs> yes, I see that. You were just young, Harry. Now, uh, could you keep the secret for another two weeks and three days? I think so. Good. Then I step out and you step in. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> You're a good boy. Good job I saw you arrive. You'd never have got up those stairs by yourself. Now, young lady, you're going to stay here and keep that foot up. A few days rest and you'll be back at work. Oh, I felt such a fool and Miss Bell was horrid. Well, never mind. I'm delighted. You're what? Delighted. Now you can't run away from me so fast. I never try to run away from you. In your mind, you have. Mr. Clitheroe got me a taxi. So I should think, clumsy idiot. Oh! Well, what now? I've just remembered. I suppose to go and see Olivier with Golly tonight. Oh, heck. Please, your language. Well, Brenda can go. Why don't you? No, I, I can't tonight. I'm fixed up. Where's the tea? Hello, Mary. No. I say, shouldn't you have that foot hanging in the strap? Don't be silly, that's for gout. Yeah, where's the tea? It's here again. The tea is in the tin marked tapioca. The tea is not in the tin marked tapioca. The tin marked tapioca is empty. You're quite right. You bought the last spoonful yesterday, remember? New packet. Oh, Pepperfields. By the way, Mary started to swear now. Oh, don't blame her. Does it hurt like blazes? No, it wasn't that. I remember the theatre tonight. Brenda will have to go. Oh, darn. Well, thank you, dear. But as it happens, Brenda has a date. Not what I call a number one date, but a date. Who oh, will? She will wear something quite simple. Suitable for a bash at the bobs. Who oh, will? Hey, you've had your...
had your share of our point. No, I haven't finished yet. That's what you think. Your next move is clearing away. Sorry, madam, this is not one of my tables. Well, you come here often enough, don't you? You saucy uh -oh. so. No, really. I got a report to write about that job I was on last night. Big stuff? Small boys pinching apples? No, big boys pinching rations. After that, I've got a date. Everybody's got dates but me. And me. That's what you think. Who? Huh? Brenda, I think you might tell me who you've got those scarlet claws into. You'd be surprised. Not after knowing you five years, I shouldn't. Door! What's the matter with you? Paralyzed? I'm all wet. Don't tempt me. All right, coming! Oh! oh good evening. Oh, she thinks you're going to shoot. That'll come later. Uh, oh, well, won't you come in? Oh, thank you. I uh, brought uh, one or two... Uh, Ah. I brought you one or two flowers. Mr. Clitheroe, they're, they're lovely, but really you shouldn't have done it. Oh, I shouldn't go about breaking people's legs, should I? Oh, it's only a sprain. It doesn't hurt. Oh, good. I'll put them in water, shall I? And then they can go on the table. Then we can all enjoy them. I hope this won't go down to my report. Uh, no. You uh, going out tonight? She is. You didn't see a one-eyed Chinaman hanging about outside, did you? No. No, I can't believe my eyes. Why? She always thought you were a woman hater. And I always imagined you never left Pepperfields ever. Oh, I do get out sometimes, you know. And you're wrong, too. I'm so glad your leg's better. I must be off now. Oh, no. Not absolutely clear what this is, but won't you have a drink? Well, uh, yes, thanks very much. Brenda! I'm sorry. But I'm going to need that. Oh. May I come in? Yes, if you feel you can. But um, you'll have to take us as you find us. Oh, hello, Mary. How's the ankle getting along? Good evening. Is it feeling any better? Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Clare. I, uh... Oh, uh, Harry, how are you? This is nice. Yes. We shall um, have to make a slight alteration in our plans. Better hurry. Those suits have to be in before midnight. <laughs> Can you drink in it? That's never given me any trouble up to now. I'm very smart. Thanks. Well, I hope you'll soon be back. Well, I felt she could be back tomorrow. Oh, but she can't stand. She can sit at the cash desk. Somebody told me you were a lightning calculator. Who did? You did. <laughs> well, you see, uh, Miss Evans left us this evening to swell the ranks of the civil service. More money, shorter hours, more tea, you know. So I felt that if you'd like to, you oh, could... I'd uh... love it. I've always hated all that. Well, I mean, I'd love it. Oh, good. Thanks, Mr. Clitheroe. Dancing or just eating? Oh, well, uh, both, I thought. You're fond of the theatre, Mr. Clitheroe? Shut up, Brenda. Because Dolly's going tonight all alone with an empty seat in her handbag. Is that true? Well, Mary was coming. Well, if I could find somebody for her to go with, I'd feel much better. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm at a loose end this evening, as it happens. No. Uh, yes, and I'm very fond of the theatre. No! Yes. yes. What's all the argument about? I've got my car outside. We could drop you. You what? C-A-R. Car, you know. Oh. We've got our car outside. It's a very old one. <laughs> we always throw our old ones away. Don't we, Mary? Um, well, goodbye, and I'm, I'm so glad you're better. Goodbye, and thank you for being so kind. It seems a shame to leave her all alone, doesn't it? Don't worry. I think she's going to have police protection. Oh, good. Goodbye. Now, five down. Two words, four letters each. A solitary child. Only son. Oh, four letters each. Oh, yes. A solitary dick. Huh? No, you promised me before supper not to probe anymore. <laughs> Into your disgraceful past, yes, why? Well, it's not disgraceful, really. I know. How do you know? Well, it couldn't be, that's all. Besides you, little juggins, why bring that up again? Just when I decided to file it among the unsolved mysteries. Well, I'd tell you if I was to tell anyone, but you're the last person I'd tell. Oh, oh yeah, I see what you mean. What I was going to say was, I'll tell you when I'm 21. Oh, Mary, you sometimes are the most impossible little scatterbrain. Lucy Gray. What's that? 
Why, Fern, I just remembered I learned it at school. After I heard of Lucy Gray, a solitary child. Of course, yes. Lucy Gray. Good for you, Lucy. Ah, oh, well, that's one puzzle song. And it's now time all good policemen were in bed. All good waitresses, too. How right you are. It certainly is time you were in bed, young lady. There we are. Anything else you want before I go? Good night, Dick. Good night, Mary. Dick! Yes? Are you off a guess? Thank you. Good night. Well, that's better. What do you mean? Oh, I thought you'd been struck dumb. That's the first word you've spoken since we left for Aviolis. My last two. Last. What are you looking for? For a horse and cart. What do you think? Oh. A library ticket. I brought two years. Oh, a hickney stamp. Mm, used, I think. Yes, well, that seems to be all. For the last time, will you tell me? What? You know perfectly well what. Garbage by day, glamour by night. Riddle of dustman's double life. West End Club and makes millions out of meat bones, that's what. I've told you there's a perfectly simple explanation. Anyway, I just can't tell you. Not yet. Do you know what I think? What? You haven't got the guts to do a job worth doing. But once in a while, you bust your saving stamps in an evening's make-believe. And very nice, too. But don't ask me to come for any more trips in your dreamboat. Out of my life, you... you mystery man of the swill tubs. Oh, um... Here's your key. Hello, Brenda. Ty? Oh, I don't know what I am. Are you in love with him? Oh, don't be a fool. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I'm a bit mixed up tonight. I say it's awfully late. Oh, that's all right. There's no one waiting up for me. Oh, no, God. Is there anyone waiting up for you? No, no. She'd have gone to bed ages ago. Oh, I see. I, I live with my aunt. Oh. I have enjoyed myself tonight. Fine. So have I. I'm so glad. I thought you might be bored. Why? Well, the invitation was rather forced on you. Oh, nonsense. It was a, a grand surprise. Who said kind of it to bring those flowers for Mary? Oh, just nothing at all. I only hope she likes them. I, uh, I did enjoy the play, didn't you? Mm, awfully. You know, it's funny how people always turn out to be human beings once you get to know them, isn't it? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Would you call Miss Bell a human being? Yes. Yes, very much so, I'd say. It's just that some people haven't quite got the, the surface machinery for showing it, you know? Charm and so on. I think you're terribly nice. I know it's a silly thing to say, but I admire you tremendously. And it's funny because I didn't like you at all at first. Well, you know, first impressions are often... I thought you were pompous. Oh, dear. Oh, but you're not at all. And I know now that you're just shy. How nice of you to understand. I am right, aren't I? Yes, I'm afraid you are. Oh, you don't mind me telling you, do you? No, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, it gives me confidence. I am a little shy, you're quite right. And it's terribly crippling, but I don't know, with you somehow it's... it's different. I find you so easy to talk to. I'm glad. Are you? I liked you when you first came into the office, very much. And ever since then, I've thought about you quite a bit. And I've often wondered what you'd think if you knew that I... thought about you. Quite a bit. I've never felt like this before. Ever. It isn't very easy to explain. I'm sorry. You're sweet and kind. And altogether a very nice person. Don't be shy of me. Oh, I'm not. I'm not shy of you. Good night. See you tomorrow. Mary? 
How was your evening? All right. How was yours? Oh, all right. Brenda home? Yes, she's gone to bed. Well, I'll be. What's the matter? You know, those blinking geraniums are budding at last. <laughs> Through the alarm. Never mind about that. What do you think? The Rosas. The what? True as I stand here, police call outside, cops at the side door. I'll see them just this minute. Oh, you never. Without a word of a lie. Patsy, do you know my friend was at Rawlings when they had them? She said they brought a female Rosa with them. It was awful. They searched them. Oh, well, my luck's in. All clean on underneath yesterday morning. <laughs> you say that all this stuff can be traced to the black market? It can. No, thank you, sir. I don't know what to suggest. Any new staff taken on lately, say, three months ago? Oh, let me see this. How about these three? May the 28th? Uh, no, it wouldn't be them. <laughs> Not so far, sir. Are they still here? Yes. Anybody else taking them? No. Brenda, about last night, I... You better tell it to the police. Brenda, that's the fourth time I've tried to... What does she mean, police? Didn't you know we had the cops on the premises? No, why? I don't know. Unless there's some private lives to investigate round here. But, Miss Bell, Mr. Clitheroe assures me that these three waitresses were interviewed by you. And you say they were not. They were not? But I... One moment, sir. Are you quite sure you didn't see these girls? Quite. Well, they weren't interviewed at all. Unless one of you is, uh... Inspector, I was in here the whole afternoon doing the end-of-month's accounts. But when I sent for you to come and help me with the figures, I was told that you were interviewing the girls. Well, madam, I suppose I'd better own up. I did play truant that afternoon. I went and stood in a queue for some theatre tickets. What theatre? The new, Romeo and Juliet. Thank you. I'd like to see these three one at a time. Miss Mary Corder. Right. I shan't watch you for the time being. Thank you, sir. Sir, now what? Well, this case. We haven't got a case. Well, sir, I'm not very keen on what we haven't got. Nor am I. Now, sir, if you'd let me... Come in. Why, Dick? Mr. Clifford, I was that... You know this young lady, Sergeant? She's sprained her ankle, sir. Too bad. That doesn't answer my question. Oh, sorry, sir. Yes, I do. Now, Mary, don't worry at all, because everything's going to be all right, see? Now, Thank you, you Sergeant. Yes, sir. Miss Corder, you were engaged here on May the 28th? Yes. You did not produce any references? Yes. No. I think she means yes, she didn't, sir. Oh, does she? Thanks very much. I mean, after all, sir, it's not an offence to get a job without references. Now, if the references were forged... Sergeant. Uh... Yes, sir? I'm not in your way by any chance. Oh, no, sir. Nor did you undergo any preliminary interview. Now, Miss Corder, this looks as if you had something to conceal. What was that? Now, look, sir, she's not under suspicion. You can't... Sergeant, this is not my first interrogation. But this girl... Oh, stop it, Dick. I'll tell him everything. It doesn't matter. He's right. I did it. Did what? I ran away from home. I'm not 21 until August. And I know they can make me go back. But my stepfather, he wanted me to marry someone. Oh. Miss Corder, unofficially, I'm sorry you had to run away from home. Very. 
But officially, I'm not interested in the slightest. Sergeant Lambert might be, but I'm not. Do you think you could answer me one more question? Yes. Have you any knowledge of illicit traffic in foodstuffs in this restaurant? Why, no. I believe you, absolutely. Yes, Sergeant. You may assist Miss Corder from the room. What? Oh, thank you, sir. Don't be such a bird brain. Well, where does he get all that money from? He wouldn't tell me, now I know why. <laughs> Never mind. You won't get more than three years. You can wait that long. Oh, I hate you. Sorry, Brent. I'm only trying to snap you out of it. You want a clean hanky? Where's your key? Hello, what's this? Well, do you suppose there's one more question you could answer? Yes. I'll ask you tonight, and you'll have all day to think it over. Dick, huh? I don't know what it is. Don't you? Well, parents have no claim on married daughters, you know. See what I mean? You know where Brenda is, Gloria? She was in the locker room, Mr. Uh, look, golly, um, Mr. Rain, uh, don't, don't worry. Don't be alarmed. The sooner the better, I think, Mr. Clitheroe. Yes. I've been looking for you everywhere. The police want to see you in Mr. Clitheroe's office. And stop sniveling about the place. Oh, no. no. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. You'll just go in for a couple of minutes and then you'll be out again. Now, don't worry. What a business is all, isn't it? Your shoulder will be wet with tears before the day's out. It may wash away some of last night's face powder. There's no need to be unkind about it, I have two there? master keys. You begin at that end. This is very distasteful, you know, and I, I hardly think it's necessary. Crime is distasteful. Retribution necessary. What? Uh. Hello, Brenda. Oh, darling, I won't tell them anything, I swear it. They shan't get you. Oh, darling. They shan't. Come in. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Brenda Lawrence. What have you been crying for? I haven't. Well, what if I have? Is it any of your business? It may be, Miss Lawrence. Brenda. Hello. Oh, my dear. Another friend of yours? Why, yes, sir. It so happens Dick, that Dick, I... you know Harry. You know he'd never... Oh, been... so you know Harry as well, do you? Why, yes, sir. He's the pit food Yes, man. but Harry wouldn't do it. Miss like Florence. Quantities of foodstuffs have found their way out of these premises into the black market. Now, on May the 28th... Inspector, if anyone's responsible, it's me. It was my idea to walk in here without references. As it happens. I'm more interested in what you may have walked out with. Oh, no, sir, you've got it wrong. Get us to... Dick Lambert. Well, of all the skunk's tricks. Won't you introduce me? Inspector uh, uh, Bates, Miss Rain. Miss Rain, Inspector Bates. Thanks very much. For nothing. Well, how do you like that? Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. Oh, golly, that's not true. Inspector... Quiet! Now, to settle one point at a time, Sergeant Lambert was assigned to this case at 9 o'clock this morning. Not by his own choice. Oh, thank you, sir. All mine. I was telling Miss Lawrence, before I was interrupted, that certain foodstuffs have found their way to the black market recently, and they've been traced to this restaurant. Now, on May the 28th, the... What is the matter with this place today? Who the devil are you? And you? Uh, oh, good morning, my dear. Excuse me, I sir. Come and take my order. I've got it. Kindly oblige me by leaving my desk alone. Your desk? I'm James Hartley Pepperfield. I own this restaurant and this desk. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm Inspector Bates, a police officer. I'm conducting, that is, I'm trying to conduct, an investigation into the disappearance of foodstuff on these premises. Indeed. Lucky I looked in. Yes, sir. You Otherwise, I suppose I should have known nothing at all about it until you had the entire staff under lock and key. Well, we tried to get you, sir. Come in. 
I don't think it would be to go any further with your don't investigation. I have a very loud which calls the gate of this long room. Look at one now. Oh, my dear, Mr. Pettigrew, think of the inspector's Shall we observe the traditional courtesy of hearing the lady first? Mr. Pettigrew, I... That's my coat. Where did she get that? From your locker, Miss Rain. A locker? And this was in the pocket. One hundred and twenty pounds. Mr. Clitheroe was present at the time. My dear child. Inspector, this is fantastic. Why, this young lady is quite... Just a minute. If there's an explanation, and there may easily be, I'm sure Miss Rain is the one to give it. I've never had 120 pounds in my life. Then how do you explain this? Inspector, can I have a word with you? And who might you be? Allow me to introduce the new proprietor of Pepperfields, my grandson, Harry. He served his apprenticeship in the kitchens, but uh, from now on, Harry, my boy. Harry? Harry? Oh, thank you, Mr. Pepperfield. The laundry. I'd forgotten it. You pack the laundry personally, don't you, Miss Bell? Certainly, I... Did you pack this lot? I... Why, yes. Let me take it. Oh, no. Perhaps the inspector would like to see the sort of laundry we send out from Pepperfields. This is a very serious matter, Miss Bell. Miss Bell, I must ask you to come along with me. Yes, that's very nice. So you decided to go blonde after all? Yes, Miss Rain. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like it. But uh, watch those roots. Oh, I think perhaps the pearls are just a bit too regal, Shirley. You don't want to make the customers jealous. Oh, they're not real. All the same, no pearls, Shirley. Oh, dear. And I was depending on them. No earrings either. You're much prettier without them. All right, girls. This line, relax. You're new, aren't you? Yes, Miss Rain. I hope you'll be very happy. Thank you, Miss Rain. Um, both hands. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody had the morning cuppa? Yes, yes Miss Rain. All right, girls. Here we go, girls. <laughs> I think I'll have some soup, but it must be thick. Is that clear? Can't be clear if it's thick, can it? <laughs> I suppose not. Bad show, bad show. Well, I mean, thick is thick and clear is clear. And never the meat shall twain, eh? <laughs> I see you are a jolly little girl. <laughs> well, that's all there is left except date pudding. That's an idea. One date pudding? Never mind about the pudding, but a date? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, I shall never go there again. The fish was so underdone it was transparent, and the soup was like a stain on the bottom of the plate. I asked Carol what she thought, and what do you think she said? Most attractive. Nothing of the sort, she... Charles! I don't know that I shall ever come here again. And all because of one silly little heel. I don't think that's very polite. Harry isn't a heel. The heel of my shoe, stupid. Oh, the heel of your shoe. Well, here's to it. And all that's happened because of it. Ladies and gentlemen, children, as we are drinking toasts, I should like to propose one too. Pepperfields has been here for a hundred years, but for the last twenty years I've been worried about the state of its health. But not now. When you're old, it's hard to change your ideas, but it can be done, can't it, Harry, my boy? <laughs> you're all young, you're lucky, but I'm lucky too. So I'd like you to drink a toast to something that means a great deal to me. And I think a great deal to you, too. Pepperfields. 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 <laughs>